This is Doug Caldwell, University of Florida, Collier County Extension. It's the end of March 2012 in Naples, Florida. We're looking at what should be a privacy hedge. It's Alba buchi viburnum, but it's suffering from two diseases. The main disease is the downy mildew blight that's causing a, a large amount of defoliation and to a lesser degree, Cercospora leaf spot disease. This is why Alba buchi viburnum is known as mirror leaf viburnum. You have large, shiny leaves, very attractive hedge when you have the leaves. We have two diseases active here. The most serious disease, downy mildew disease, or blight, favors cooler nights, say 50 degrees, and high relative humidity, even fog. We had those sort of conditions back in January and February. A second disease, because of our unusually warm days, almost 10 degrees above normal, is Cercospora leaf spot disease. It likes those warmer temperatures. We get some spotting, but not nearly as much defoliation as we do with the downy mildew blight. We have two pathogens at work here. Here's how you distinguish between them. The downy mildew blight starts off as a spot, and then it enlarges. And you have this bronzing and browning discoloration, leaf curl, distortion, leaf drop. You look down here, you catch it just at the right angle. You can see that where the fungus has invaded the leaf tissue, it's discolored and sort of bronzy, and then it gets brown. And then when the conditions are right, you'll see the downy mildew stuff, the little white velvet stuff that grows when it's really humid. And that's reproductive structures with the spores. Whereas the Cercospora leaf spot is a more distinct spot with a distinct yellow halo and when you flip it over you don't see the downy mildew. Well what causes a disease? Classic plant pathology teaches us the disease triangle. First we have the susceptible host, Awabuki viburnum. Second, a very aggressive pathogen, downy mildew. And then just the right weather conditions. In this case when these three factors come together just right, you will have downy mildew blight on your awabuki hedge. This morning we're with Debbie Gogan, who's got the responsibility of looking after a whole lot of landscaping here in the vineyards. Is that right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, we work for the developer and we take care of all the landscape here at the vineyards. And as you can see, um, we're having uh, difficulties with the awabuki here in the Actually, vineyards. Last year, 2011, March, was when the problem started. And then this year, a year later, it's the same situation, maybe even a little bit more severe, because now we, we were able to see it a little bit sooner, get on it right away, um, start sanitation practices to remove the leaves. And um, it still went through a process of the defoliation. So we got to watch the weather on this one. We have those cool, foggy nights back in January, February. That's when we got to try those fungicides, all right? Yes, yes. And repeated applications, probably. Yes, we have a second treatment coming up um, to help prevent the spread so that the damage isn't quite as severe. And then maybe get another game plan for next year. <laughs> um, with the anticipation that the, the cool nights and the humidity um, will probably repeat itself for a third year. So what can you do to help prevent these diseases? Sanitation is essential to control leaf diseases. If you can, and you only have a few shrubs, rake up those leaves and get those spores out of there. The second thing you can do is look at where your irrigation is going. Overhead watering splashes and spreads spores all over the place, making the defoliation worse. Here's a prime example. Note the leaves on top are healthy. Water is spraying onto the lower half of this awabuki hedge. Downy mildew blight is caused by a water mold. Its spores are spread by moving water. Hence, the big gaps in your privacy hedge. You may need to change irrigation heads. In this case, pop-ups instead of rotors should have been used. So keep your plants as dry as possible. 
Remember, fungicides need to be used preventively. As soon as you see leaf spots developing, you need to get out there with your fungicide applications. Be sure to spray both the top and the bottom of the foliage. And you will need to repeat every two to three weeks as long as the weather is favorable for disease development. Dr. Aaron Palmatier at the University of Florida Tropical Research and Education Center in Homestead recommends any one of the following. Alliot WDG, Heritage, or Insignia. Control of Cercospora leaf spot disease requires different fungicides such as Clearis 3336, Banner, or Magkazeb. Your Awabuki should leaf out again in late April to May as our nights warm up. This is Doug Caldwell helping you to beautify your landscape and protect the environment.